What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the Innovators Den. I'm formerly known as Hashtag Danny Silverio, and I'm here with Steve O Business, and we have a special, special guest. We got Marcus here. What's up, Marcus? What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? We're doing great, man. So it's a pleasure to have you here because you've been doing something great with the community. First and foremost, Marcus has been going school to school, uh, talking about uh, financial literacy to kids right, right. Um, we did something similar we did something with youth build and I yeah. think you you got the opportunity to work with them at one point and you you're also communicating the the book that you got coming out because uh, even a fifth grader could invest even a fifth grader could learn how to invest in real estate. Right. So it's interesting because the youth is the future. So, you know, just let the, let the world know what you got going on. Tell us about the book and the course and, and where you from and all that. What's up? Well, uh, I was born in Harlem, raised in the Bronx. Harlem. All day. And um, <clears throat> what got me inspired to, to go down the entrepreneurship route I saw a movie called Richie Rich by Macaulay Culkin. Mm -hmm. you know, it's one of my favorite yeah, movies. Yeah, favorite movie, movie of all time. So when I saw him have like a McDonald's in his crib, I'm like, yo, I got to get that. At a young age. Yeah. So I knew it was, a, it was possible to achieve something greater. Because if you're in the Bronx, all you see is buildings and basketball courts. That's all you see. That's probably all you know. Right. So when I saw the movie, I said, I, I know it's something more out there. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I got an opportunity to be in the modeling industry from the age of 10 to 20. So I saw a range of cultures, fashion, crazy, a, a, a shitload of experiences. And I had right. an amazing time. So long story short, I used that platform to intern at Atlantic Records. I learned the business uh, industry behind the scenes. Got it. And it was amazing. Like the, the, mm -hmm. the celebrities, how music is really uh, done behind the scenes, the business, everything like that. So from that experience, I started my own entertainment business. And I did okay. business with Trey Songs and Fabulous and stuff like that. And the first major project I did was uh, a Be Seen, Being Green music concert. Mm. And the whole purpose of that was to promote green awareness, but through music. So, for example, we wanted Fab and Trey Songs to travel on a tour bus that was electric. Stuff like that to right. create some type of movement. I didn't know right. what I was doing at the time, but I'm like, it's something. Mm -hmm. And our first concert was in Miami. And it was a huge success. My first ever, I never had um, promoting experience, nothing. Right after that, it was, uh, the business flopped. Wow. So I lost over six figures and I had to go through a whole process of starting all over. I hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. I had to pay people back. And I learned throughout that process, like if no one, if no entrepreneur, like if no entrepreneur ever went through anything, they it's best to not do business with them at all. Cause you don't mm -hmm. know how they're gonna act. Or how I react to stuff. How they'll like handle that. it, 100%. From that experience, um, I started working with kids at the Boys and Girls Club, and I had to start from scratch. I had to learn who I was, my temperament, everything. So, fast forward, I went to a, uh, a conference where Robert Kiyosaki was the guest speaker. That's a great book. Rich Break Dad that Poor Dad, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, he was talking about how he was $300 million in debt, but when he was saying it, he was so happy about it. I'm like, damn, why is he so happy? Because in school, they was talking about, like, stay away from debt, stay away from credit cards. Mm -hmm. But he's saying the total opposite. I was so intrigued, I bought Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And when I read that book, I'm like, game over. So I read all his books. Excuse me. I invested in all his, uh, I invested in his private real, real estate investing course. Water. I invested in his real estate investing course. And um, from there, within three months, I uh, got my first property with no money and no credit. Wow. Like literally, I thought it was a fugazi, you know, people say it, but I definitely did it. And from that day on, after I got my first property with no money, no credit, once I got that first check, I knew it was real. And I knew that exchanging time for money wasn't for me, right? So I started to generate passive income. Thank you. I started to generate passive income and without exchanging time for money. Yeah, that's and then I started learning about credit. Because remember, my credit back then was bad. So for people to say they can't get started because they have no credit or no money, that's just an excuse. They just don't know better. You know they what I'm saying? Know. They don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. From there, um, I started to work on my credit, fix my own credit, and then I started to learn the power of credit. It was, it was very powerful, guys. It's beyond measure. And at this time, I started investing in real estate 2017. So at this time, I'm like, wow, if I, learned, if I just found out about this 2017, this has been going on for eons. 
Yeah. And we've been in school learning about stuff that probably don't even matter. They don't even mm -hmm. mention credit in school. Adam, not even a little bit. Not right? even mention it. EIN, like, what is that? Like, right? Yeah. So, well, uh, as soon as you get to college, you get, like, credit card offers. And they don't even <laughs> mention it there either. Yeah, like, yeah but I'm was, saying, like, you don't know anything about credit, and then you get a credit card offer. You're just like, oh, I can swipe this. No. Yeah, like, when I was in college, they offered me a, um, an Amex Gold card, charge card, with no limit. So, college, I went bonkers. I ain't know what it was. Same. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> It was crazy, but anyway, so once I started learning the process of how to acquire real estate with no money and credit, then I learned about credit, I never looked back. And uh, my first property was in Binghamton, New York, and I made a lot of mistakes with that one. It was <laughs> crazy. I mean, mistakes is your best teachers, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. School couldn't have told me that right. at all. So I definitely learned, I, I made a lot of mistakes with that one, so from that experience, I got stronger. And honestly, that mistake with the Binghamton property was kind of like a speeding ticket on my wrist because, like a slap on the wrist a little bit because the entertainment business was a huge, colossal mistake. So by the time I got to this, it stung a yeah, little bit, but it didn't, but it didn't hurt as much. much. Mm -hmm. So from there, I, like I said, um, business credit, I started acquiring um, properties with business credit. So now I invest in Delaware, PA, and Ohio. So I don't invest in New York because New York is not landlord friendly. Yeah. I'm not saying don't do it, but from my experience, yeah, it's a, I just don't invest in New York. No, that makes sense. So what is, you know, so now that you, you did communicate with the kids, you got a book coming out. Right. So based on my experience investing in real estate and going through the ebbs and flows, I knew that the kids had no idea what was going on in the real world, not even a little bit. And it was very disturbing what's really going on in the real world, and they're not teaching it in school. So one day I just started going, so because I went to, because I used to work at a boys and girls club, I started going back to the boys and girls club and say, listen, I would like to do a workshop, teach the kids about financial literacy in a fun way, and see how they receive it. Because mm -hmm. financial literacy, if you think about the term, is mad boring, it's not enticing, it's not exciting. Mm -hmm. Right. So they gave me an opportunity, and I just started teaching kids from third grade all the way to adults wow and the third between like the third graders third graders and sixth graders they get it so easily because when you're an adult you have to unlearn to learn again right it's very frustrating but kids it's not so much garbage in their yeah. mind so they easy to oh, feel they adapt real quick yeah. right so they, they adapt real quick and then the more i started to do it and teach it i started to have fun i started losing track of time and i was doing it for free so then one day, some woman was like, um, how much you charge? I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> right? And she like, yo, you're not charging? I'm like, nah. She said, you're bugging. Like, you need to charge. And that's when I started, like, understand my value and when I get back. Because at the end of the day, I was having fun, but mm -hmm. you can't do it for free all the time. Yeah. So from there, I started to create a buzz and a following. And then before you know it, all the after school programs in school started reaching out to me. I said, you know, can you come and teach? And for 90 minutes, I um, do like a cool curriculum for them to have fun and learn at the same time. And I introduce the cash flow board game. And it's like Monopoly, but it, it applies to real life. So the more mistakes that you make on the game, it will show in your learning curve if you continue in real life. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's an amazing experience. And that, that had, so that led into the book. Mm. Now, me writing a book, I never saw myself writing a book, nev never in a million years, like right. ever. And I feel like me writing that book, if it wasn't a struggle for me writing a book. I just, like one day I was just home, bored, and I just started typing. And then 25 pages later, I said, man, let me just double space this to see. Boom, you had a book. It was 50 pages, and I'm like, wow, this is a book. And I just kept going and going and going, and it felt natural, it was a natural flow. And that from that experience, I felt like struggle, I don't think struggle is normal. You might have challenges, but I don't think, I think we make struggle, we complicate things so we struggle. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm only using that because when I wrote the book, I didn't struggle. It literally just flowed through me and out of me and I just, it just became a book. Wow. So, and synonymous with the book and the financial literacy that I teach at the financial workshops, I have a curriculum coming out, I have a book coming out, and I'm just gonna continue to um, spread my message, awareness, and just have fun doing it. When is the book coming out? The book is gonna launch the end of August. 
Okay. From there, I'm going to just use that as a platform to do uh, public speaking workshops and get the message out there because I think a lot of people make real estate extremely difficult to learn because they use all these mumbo jumbo words and they right. probably don't even know it. Can you speak on like maybe four or five markets that you think is, are coming up and four or five markets that you think is going down as far as like... Uh, well, different strategies of real estate, right? There's buy and hold, there's flipping, there's wholesaling and things of that nature. So I, re like, I keep it simple. I focus on cash flow and I focus on states that's landlord friendly. Because if you, if you invest in, in New York, it's more in favor of the tenant. It takes them. It takes tenants forever to get kicked out, evicted. Now I don't. I don't want people to get kicked out, but on the land on the landlord side of things, I can understand it. On the tenant side, you don't want to get kicked out. Of course. So it's more in favor of the tenant. So I invest in like states like PA, Ohio, Delaware, just to name a few, because they're so landlord friendly that the the court is more on your side and they don't play games. So as far as like, I don't really follow trends like that because trends come and go. Mm -hmm. you have to just do your due diligence and know what works for you. You get what I'm saying? So there's no wrong or right way of doing things. It's just you got to figure out what works for you, and I, and I just stay in my lane. So do you have like a cash flow calculator or something like that? Yeah, so what I do is I have like an a analyzer, and I just I plug in numbers, and if the numbers work for me, then I'll go out and see it. I won't, work, I won't waste the broker's time, the agent's time, we don't need to see each other. If the numbers work, then I'll build a rapport with you and then go from there. And it's not, it's, it's really simple. But I think the more and more I continue to have more experience in it, it's really simple. I think just people just make it complicated and use big complicated words. And I'm still learning to this day. Mm -hmm. So I might be in rooms, they might say some long word. And I'm like, what does that mean? And if they can't explain it, then I just can't learn from you. I gotta learn from someone else. So that makes sense. Pretty much it. That makes sense. So you mentioned that you had a lot of um, hiccups or hurdles and <laughs> with the Binghamton property. One, like, what did you learn from those hurdles and what can you teach somebody about? Okay, things? so, all right. So when I first got the property in Binghamton, I was super excited. Like, you couldn't tell me nothing. So my ego was on a, on a whole nother level. You couldn't tell me nothing. So I was so excited that the first tenant I got I didn't screen her. So I ain't do no background checks. I just said she has section eight. Come on in. Easy money, right? As soon as I did that, it was like a, a roller coaster from day one. From day one. So at the time I was working at the Boys and Girls Club. So Binghamton was four hours away. Yeah, so wow. if she had like a if the tenant had a light bulb that went out, I had to go all the way up there just to change the light bulb. I ain't had like I was so green. I was just so green, I didn't know anything. So I didn't hire a property manager, I was just self-managing it. So, and the tenant knew I was a rookie. She smelled it, she saw it, she said, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I went, you know, I, I went with it, but I knew she, she just took advantage, took and advantage. I allowed her, yeah. you know what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Still. But she was my best teacher, and I thank her. Like, if I see it to this day, I'll thank her, because I'm glad it was a two, uh, it was a duplex property. I'm glad it wasn't like a 10 unit building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she gave me a run for my money. And with that property, um, I was stressed out and I had that property taken away. So I hit rock bottom with that one and I bounced back and I got more property and now I make less mistakes mm -hmm. and I'm continuing to grow from there. So you would say that for a entry level investor, let's say right. they come in how important it is to have a, a property management uh, our, our property manager is extremely important because it can make or break your deal. Like even if you get the property, if you, get a, if you hire a, a bad property manager, you can lose money and lose the property completely. A lot of people think that because if someone is a lawyer and they might say something that you not agree with, but because that person's a lawyer, they're not gonna question it because of the title. Mm -hmm. Not all lawyers are created, created equal, same for property managers. So what I do is I interview three property managers to see if they qualify to manage my property. And they, if they fit all the checklists, then I'll work with them. Got it. Mm -hmm. so, that's how, so that's how you want to like prevent from going through what I went through. And because I self-managed for eight months. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough. 
But after the eight months, I did hire a property manager. But after I hired them, it was too late. Yeah, it was already. But to, to piggyback what you're saying, I think I highly suggest whoever starts hire a property management team that knows what they're doing. And you just have to do your background checks on them to make sure that they qualify. And it makes your job so much easier. Now, if someone's uh, taking your course, do you provide like a list of the top property managers? <laughs> well, I give I give a few I give a few uh, contacts as far as brokers, agents, because at the end of the day, it is a relationship business. Mm -hmm. No matter what industry you're in, it is relationship based, right? Everything is. Everything -based. can't escape it. I tried. It's it's not fun, right? So, I do give contacts. Brokers, property managers, banks, who to go to, have some contact with some lenders that could give you some funding. I teach people the basics about how to, how to get your foot in the door. I don't get the property for you. I teach you how to get it on your own, and I'll just walk you through that process. And if That's you need dope. some help, I got some contacts. And from there, once I give you my contacts, you build that rapport, and I'm not like, oh, that's my contact. No. I give you the contact, you build that relationship, and you're on your own. I'm always here to help, but um, that's what the pro you know that's what the the course is built on. And when does like is this active right now? Are you actively like? So I'm actively I I am actively uh, teaching people on the course side. Okay. And that is separate from me teaching the kids. So. And how much would that go for if someone wants? So to for the course is uh, twenty five hundred. Okay. And I teach you for the whole year. Pretty much the 2,500 locks you in for the whole year, but at the same time, it's like unlimited access, even if you're still running into trouble after that year is over. It's like a lifetime membership. Got it. Right? Right. So that's what I'm doing right now. Awesome. Can you speak a little bit more about like the book, any concepts that you go like uh, in detail in? Yeah, so the book actually is, all right, so half of the book is the fictional story. And the other half of the book is a, a educational part of real estate that you can learn and apply. And the fictional story is actually my story, but I just can't use other names for, you know, because you got to go through loops and holes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it basically tells my story of how, how I got started and the basics of what's the difference between a broker, an agent, a flipper, a wholesaler, taxes, just the basics. And if you want to dive deeper into the education of real estate, then I, I give you the opportunity to do your own due diligence, but I just give you the basics, right? And in the, in the story, in the book, it's just a story of how he got started, the, the pitfalls that you might run into, so you won't have to run into it. Because if you think about it, all fictional stories have a story within the story. Mm -hmm. And it's for you, it will be wise for you to like pick up on it, learn from it, so you won't make the same mistakes that those characters you know, went through mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the story. And on the other side of the book, it's just practical information that you can also learn. And it has some spiritual concepts to it because I'm real big on the mindset, who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. It plays a huge part. And I also mentioned that a lot of people, from, from my experience, a lot of people allow their color to hinder them from move, moving forward. Right. And... In the book, I explain there's a guy named A.G. Gatson, and it was a guy from Mississippi in the 1930s. And he was a multimillionaire in the height of, a K, of the KKK era. And he was, you know, a colored person, but he was a multimillionaire in that era, back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, if he could do it back then, there's no excuse why anybody right. should allow them to, like... It's pretty much them. information yeah. and... You don't know what you don't know. Right, right. So, like, so talking about like, you know, talking in schools and talking to the youth, sometimes you don't see that. I think, right. Uh, I think Cassell mentioned that, that, you know, like we, we look into music in, as, uh, as our like teachers, right? Like rappers and artists as our like teachers. So yeah, they, we looking at them as a figure of like aspiration. Right. Uh, but sometimes they might not be the right person to teach us about credit you know rappers teaching us about credit and business credit and how to set these things up like for example, ourselves i think they had like mtv cribs back in the day and they would rent some of those homes yeah and us as kids we're like oh like, my wow. god i need to <laughs> like, yeah. not understanding the logistics of the music industry not understanding like the hurdles of that you know what they go through to just be artists every day 100 percent. so i think it's important to uh, for the youth to see someone that looks like them 
it, it definitely helps, right? At the same time, I don't think it should stop there. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I think it's a, it's a dope place to start, but it shouldn't be a resting place to depend on. So what you guys are doing for people to see you guys is an amazing accomplishment and it's inspiring, right? At the same time, once you give them the alley-oop, they got to learn how to slam dunk it on their own. Yeah. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's out there. You just gotta, it's out there. It's yeah. like there's so yeah. much information out there. There's really no excuse. Yeah, you really, you can, you can map out whatever idea. You want to drive planes. You want to buy planes. Yeah. You, the information is there. And you can go intern and you can go to the airports and you can do whatever you need. Bouncing on what Steve said, I think, in a previous episode, you're like, educate yourself. Like, you have to educate yourself. You have to. In whatever market you're going to. Um, that said... Five pointers if I wanted to start tomorrow uh, to purchase some. Oh, if you uh, wanted to start it tomorrow? Yeah, if I wanted to invest in a property, no money down. Or So one thing you would have to do is well, figure out which strategy you want to get into, right? So there's flipping, wholesaling, buy and sell, things of that nature. So you have to figure out which category you want to get your foot in the door with. Okay. So that's, that's first thing given. So once you figure out what works for you, let's just say hypothetically you want to do buy and hold. I went to Craigslist, and in Craigslist, you could type in keywords to narrow down your search to see what properties are available. So for example, I typed in a keyword called seller financing. Seller financing basically is a, a property owner who doesn't want nothing to do with their house no more. And they probably have tenants in the house and they don't want to be a landlord. So. What they do is they put ads out there like, listen, um, I want to get rid of, the, rid of this house. Does anybody want to take over? Okay. And it's ads like that on Craigslist all day, but you really have to do your homework and do your due diligence and find those type of properties. And once you find those properties, you can, I can help you, but basically I'll help you like structure, reach out to the seller and know what to say so they, they'll be willing to hear you out and see what type of offer you got. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the first, I've, I've gotten two properties with no money, no credit. So I found a problem, like there was a woman, she was uh, in the verge of foreclosure. So I was a solution to her problem. So it was on Craigslist, and I reached out to her. I said, listen, I could take over your property. This is my offer. Are you willing to hand me out? She was willing to hand me out, and I literally put $0. And I took over the property, and all the cash flow came to me, and I continued to pay the mortgage for her. And after the end of three years, the deed and title was transferred to me. Wow. So that was no money. That's a gem. No credit. Yeah. So a lot of people think this, you have to have a, 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 boatload, a boatload of money to, to get or started. Or extremely high credit. Or high credit. Mm -hmm. And you don't. Now, does high credit and... It can help lower your mortgage easier. interest, yes, right? Of course. It, does, it, it definitely makes it easier. Sure. But I think when you start with, when you start with money... You, most in most cases you get lazy because you have the attitude you do disposal. bigger mistakes you don't have to be creative <laughs> in most cases but if you don't have no money you have to be creative you have to be you have to be so like you have to think outside the box and i think everybody has the opportunities to be an entrepreneur um whatever endeavor they choose to get into whether it's real estate or any other industry you could literally start with no money and eventually the money will come if you put the work in meet with the right people and just follow your dream. That's awesome. Oh, that's amazing. So where, where's the best places that people can find you right now? So right now, um, my guy Moses, he's helping me with my social media page, yes, right? Sir. So that's launching uh, the end of August. Mm -hmm. So it's Ascension Team on Instagram. So it's A-S-C-E-N-S-I-O-N, -S Team. And the reason why I named my company Ascension Team, because when you're starting to ascend, like a butterfly, you start mm -hmm. to flap your wings, you're ascending. So anytime I teach the kids, the goal is to shift their mindset from level one and ascend to the highest level as their ideal self. Mm. That's why I chose Ascension. And uh, if you need to get in contact with me, my contact info is info at ascensionmanagement.com. Excellent. Awesome. Well, it was great to have you, Marcus. I think it was a great segment. We learned a lot about, you know, the process and the opportunities in the real estate space. I think there's a lot to work on, you know? Absolutely. We got to have a conversation outside of the show. Yeah. Listen, I'm so grateful. I appreciate the opportunity. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. So don't forget to subscribe. Uh, follow us on the Innovators Den. Hit the alert button. And uh, it's a wrap. Hey!